Is the 317 head the most powerful factory head you can buy? No, but that's not the right question. The right question is, can I still make a ton of power with my 317 heads? And the answer is yes. Yes, you can. Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holdner, and as always, please welcome to the channel. Today we're talking about my favorite LS cylinder heads, that would be 317 heads, and I know you're thinking, Richard, wait, what the heck is going on here? There has to be a story behind this. There is, but they might be the best choice for a street application. Confused? Let's take a look. Okay, guys, we're going to jump in and talk about my favorite set of factory cylinder heads. That is the 317 head. And I know you're thinking, hey, Richard, but you always do comparisons where the 317 head is kind of the low man on the total bowl. And that's still true. If we compare, directly compare a 317 head to a 706 or 241 or 799, 243, it makes the least amount of power. But that really doesn't matter, especially if we're adding a turbo to this combination and we want to make lots of power under boost. We certainly can do that with a 317. We really can do that with any cylinder head, even the 317. And the reason is that we're not asking the right question. Even in my videos where I'm asking, hey, look, does this head make more power than this head? Yes, it does. They make more power. They have smaller chambers. They have an equal amount of flow or they have more flow or they have slightly less flow. Whatever the situation is, one of the heads makes more power than the other. And I get a lot of guys, hey, you need to mill the heads and equalize the compression. No, you don't want to do that on a direct back-to-back -back test comparing stock heads. So you want to compare one stock head and the other stock head and not modify them. But again, that's not the right question. The question is, can you make that power with the cylinder head that you have? And 99.9% .9 of the time, you certainly can, especially with any sort of stock head. The problem doesn't become flow rate or which head makes more power than the other head. Ultimately, the problem becomes when you have a turbo combination, do I have enough deck thickness in my factory head? And the answer is no, you don't. Because if you're going way over a thousand horsepower, which these heads can do, you get into a problem where you worry about deck thickness and not airflow. So you can make the power with the 317 heads. And I'm going to show you three different combinations where we did exactly that, where we make plenty of power with a 317 head. The other question you need to be asking yourself, and this is very, very important for a street application, not a structured dyno test on the engine dyno, can I make the power with the fuel that I need to use? You see, even though the 317 head might make less power because it has lower compression, that might be a benefit out on the street because you might be able to run more timing or more boost than a guy could with a higher compression combination because the gain that you get from boost is going to be more than you get from compression. So the 317 might actually be a benefit in that case and that's why we're going to take a look at it. we got three different combinations. This is a 5.3 liter. This is a Junkyard 5.3. We had a good size cam in it, a Comp 454 cam, which was a 613, 623 lift a 227, 243 degree duration, and 113 degree lobe separation angle. And yes, it is a turbo cam. We had big Holly 120 pound injectors, inch and seven eighths headers. We had the 317 heads, just all stock with a razor blade rebuild on them. We had an LS6 intake manifold and a stock size throttle body. All of this was optimized with a Holly HP management system so that we could get the air fuel and timing, the, the air fuel and timing combination that made the most power. And once we dialed in this 5.3 combination, it made nearly 450. 50 horsepower. It made 448 horsepower and 398 foot-pounds of torque. So just inches away from making 400 foot-pounds of torque. So it did well. So the question is, what happens when we add a turbo to this? This is a low combination because this started out as an LM7 5.3 liter dish piston and a 317 head, obviously a double whammy in terms of compression, but it allows us to run everything on, you know, it would allow you on the street to run everything on pump gas. So here's what happened when we added a single turbo. In this case, this was a, a single turbo kit with a Precision 70, 7675 turbo. And we ran also ran an air to water intercooler. We ran this, I believe, on E85. But since we only ran 7.7 .7 pounds, this could be done on pump gas without any problem. And also on the street, the nice thing, as I mentioned, Compared to a combination that had higher compression, you probably could get away with more timing and more boost with a 317 head than you could on the other. So there might be a net gain there, or at least you could equal the amount of power that you can make with a higher compression head. My guess is you probably gain more by having lower compression and more boost than you would going the other way around with the compression. So on this combination, we ran 7.7 .7 pounds. 691 horsepower, 612 foot-pounds of torque. So the thing did well. 
This turbo will support 12 or 1300 horsepower. We could keep going up and boost, obviously, with the right kind of fuel. And we could keep making more and more power, and we could get to the point that I talked about where we'd start to be concerning about the deck thickness of the factory head and not the flow rate. So the 317 heads can make lots of power. Let's take a look at two other combinations. Okay, let's take a look at another combination where we ran 317 heads. This is a comparison that I did on a factory LS3 crate motor from the guys at Gander Chevrolet, and we compared the factory LS3 rec port heads versus 317 heads. Not surprisingly, the factory rec port heads make more power than any of the factory heads, and so they made more power than 317 heads. But again, that's not the question even though in this case, I probably would recommend the rec port heads because they also have big chambers. So they would have, they would kind of match the static compression and probably the detonation threshold of the 317 heads. But that doesn't mean that you can't run your 317 heads and make good power as we'll show here. So we've got a factory LS3 crate motor. We put a camshaft in it. It was a Comp 469, which is a 613, 623 lift. 231, 243 degree, degree duration and 113 degree lobe separation angle. And I actually think that this was a 231, 247. I think that that number is incorrect. But at any rate, we ran engine 7 8 headers. We had big injectors in it to support the power level. We ran the 317 heads with a fast LSX RT intake manifold and then 102 millimeter throttle body. But, you know, and, and that's, a, that's a good intake manifold for that combination. We optimize the air fuel and the timing as we always do and run with the 317 heads on our 6.2 liter, our cam 6.2 liter, 551 horsepower. So not bad horsepower, actually pretty good, worked out pretty well and 507 foot pounds of torque. So for any kind of turbo combination, this would be a good starting point because at 14.7 pounds of boost at another, you know, atmosphere of pressure, you're talking about 1100 horsepower. So this was good. We didn't run anywhere near that much boost. We were doing more street kind of stuff, but here's our turbo combination on the 317 heads, over 800 horsepower, 807 horsepower, Again, fairly low boost level. This was just over seven pounds. So you can see that we could get to points with the, we could ultimately get to whatever the maximum flow limit is of the turbo, even using the 317 heads. So they work very well. There are plenty of power. Again, we could get to the point where, hey, we need to start being concerned about what is the deck thickness. And speaking of deck thickness, we're going to take a look at one more combination where we probably got up to what I think would kind of be the limit. I mean, the combination actually ran fairly well, um, right up to the point where <laughs> we kind of grenaded everything, but it actually worked pretty well and we made lots and lots of power using ported versions of the 317 heads. Now let's take a look at our final combination where we ran 317 heads. These are actually ported 317 heads and this kind of gives you an idea of where the outer limits of the 317 might be. In fact, this is probably beyond where I would recommend most people running them. We got away with it kind of on the dyno until we didn't, but it wasn't a function of us losing the ceiling from the you know limited deck thickness. But this was a good combination. This was uh, the original six liter Big Bang. This was a Gen 3 motor. So let's take a look at the description. Our NA combination was a six liter LQ4 short block. We had put ring gap in it, otherwise stock block, crank rods, pistons. This was a well-used motor. In fact, this one belonged to Chad from Bankshift and it had 250 something thousand miles on it. We put a set of CNC ported 317 heads from the guys at Total Engine Airflow, so factory heads that they had done their program to. We put dual springs from Brian Tooley Racing. We also had a Brian Tooley Racing Stage 3 turbo camshaft in it. We had a Holley High Ram, 105 millimeter throttle body, big injectors. We ran this thing originally with inch and seven eighths headers before we put the turbo stuff on there. Um, this was our baseline, basically, again, Holly HP management system, and run with the ported 317 heads and the BTR Stage 3 turbo cam. This thing made 530 horsepower and 456 foot-pounds of torque, and we can take a look and see what happened once we started adding boost to this thing. So here, I'm going to go ahead and move myself over here because we're going to start going up pretty rapidly. So this was uh, almost 11 pounds where we were over 900 horsepower, 920 horsepower. And then 14 and a half pounds, we are up at uh, 1,060. 19 and a half pounds. 
we are at uh, 1170. And then <laughs> 25 pounds, 1430. And we eventually, right before this thing, um, right before this thing let go, we ran 28 pounds and it made um, 1482 before it finally uh, succumbed to, <laughs> I think, not, not being strong enough for what we were trying to do or, or us being foolish about it. But it shows you what happens and how much power you can make. So the 317 heads, these were imported for them, can make lots and lots of power. In fact, the this combination was <laughs> maybe the most that I've seen with a set of, of otherwise, you know, these were ported, but stock deck 317 is. And again, that this is probably beyond the range of where I recommend most people taking it, but it gives you an idea of what you can do with 317 heads, especially with ported versions. You can go beyond where you should be thinking about, you know, hey, this deck thickness probably is not going to last this long, especially for lots of runs out there. You should be thinking Thinking about an aftermarket head again not because of flow because these things flowed very well but because of the deck thickness <laughs> armature holder make sure to like share subscribe ring the bell 317 heads do work on the street especially on pump gas so make sure that you use them